Hey kids, straight from Emerson College to your TV, take a seat. It's time for Milk and Cookies with television's sweetest host, Katie Jo. Oh, hi y'all, welcome back. I'm really glad to see you. I hope that your break was wonderful and whatever holiday you celebrate was great. Today is going to be a wonderful episode. I'm really hey, excited. Mom. Oh, hey there, Professor Blueberry. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well. I haven't seen you in a while. I know. How was your break? Well, I went to the annual Mensa Christmas party. Oh. It's very exclusive. Hush, hush. Only geniuses are allowed to go. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. What kind of stuff do y'all do there? Well, I shouldn't be sharing this. I won't tell anyone. You promise? I promise. Okay. Okay. We drank eggnogs and then diagram the molecular structures of each egg and each nog that went into it. Wow, Professor Blueberry, you guys sure know how to party. You think you could get me in? Uh, don't be silly, Katie Jo. Oh, <laughs> you're right. Did you get anything super exciting for Christmas? Well, hmm, but I got a blender that I can use to make my cookies. Wait, a blender to make cookies? I think you mean a mixer, Katie Jo. <laughs> Whoops, you're right. That's why you're at the Genius Conventions and I'm not. Anyway, I got a mixer to make my cookies, and I got a subscription to Southern Living Magazine. Well, Southern Living Magazine? What's that about? It's about living Southern. It's really fun, I promise. Oh, okay, I believe you. <laughs> oh, I have this thing I've been working on I'd like to show oh, you. Oh, can I see? Yeah, hold on one second. Oh, it's Do you need me help heavy. with it? Oh, oh yeah. let me oh, help you. Oh, thank you, Katie Jo. Whoa, mm. what is this thing? Well, it's a time machine, of course. I built it myself. I'll be a shoo-in for the Nobel Prize oh. this year in science. Take that, Al Gore. <laughs> well, does this thing actually work? Oh, I haven't tried it yet. The flux capacitor was being a bit snippy with me. Would you like me to show you how it could work? Yeah, I'd love to see how it works. You know, this thing kind of reminds me of the DeLorean that I used to drive. <laughs> oh, well, can you hold it up next to oh. me? I have to type in the secret code. Yeah, code. can, oh, should I not look? Don't look okay, or listen. Oh, Everyone no, close I, your eyes and ears. I'm watching I you. I won't listen. One. 21 gigawatts. Can okay, I, now you can, can listen. I, can I look? Okay. Yes. And then the actuators must spin up to 80 Eight. miles per hour. And then, Katie Jo, don't push that button! Oh, great Scott! Oh. Where are we? And what am I wearing? Oh, don't panic, Katie Jo. Everything will be fine. Nobody freak out. There's no reason to panic. Um, I, I, I'm not panicking, Professor Blueberry. Instead I, of worrying, why don't you leave that to me? I have a PhD in quantum calculus. Well, Professor Blueberry, your time machine took us to the past, but oh, yeah. what year? Yeah. What year is this? <sighs> I'm glad you asked. It is the year 1924, and I know this because I am Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart. Oh, please have a seat. Oh, I would love to. Amelia. Please help us. We are from the future and we got lost. Great snappy bagels. This is from the future, eh? Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, would you guys like to learn all about the Roaring Twenties? Oh, uh, we would love to. I know our young viewers out there would love to learn all about it. Hmm. Great. Well, the Twenties were all about new social luxuries, fashion revolutions, Ooh. and jazz music. Hmm. I am a famous pilot, one of the only women pilots of my time. Now little girls everywhere can grow up to be pilots. You know, put your mind to it. You can accomplish anything. Oh, I say that all the time. <laughs> oh, Amelia, can you teach us the Charleston? It's one of my favorite dances. I sure can. Oh, I am so excited. I can't wait to learn it. We're going to go to a commercial break, and then we'll be right back to learn the Charleston. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey boys and girls, we try and travel to the year 1924 and our new friend Amelia Earhart taught us how to do the Charleston. Oh Amelia, I'm tired. Can we take a breather? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so Amelia, what kind of other things do you do for fun in the 1920s? Well, let's see. There's this new thing called television, mm. but I don't really see it catching on. I mean, motion pictures nowadays are getting crazy. You know, I hear. They might have the actors talking. Oh, oh they, they will. The 1920s were when movies were in a golden age. Hollywood was digging its roots, and sound was being developed. The silent films were, be, were being replaced with the talkies. <laughs> talkies? Motion pictures? Actors talking? <laughs> Certainly you jest. Uh, what's next? Men landing on the moon, women getting the right to vote, watching movies on your phone. <laughs> That's out of fairy tales. Well, you know, Amelia, we've actually made a lot of improvements over the last hundred years. 
we have landed on the moon and we have computers and the internet and we've cured polio and there is this one movie called Star Wars and it is going to knock your socks off in 1977. Star Wars? Mm -hmm. Huh. Interesting. So what's this? Oh, I don't touch that. Don't touch that. Oh Lord, where are we now? Time traveling is messing up my hair. The year is 2154. Hello, Katie Joe from oh. 2010. Hello. How do you know my name? I read about you all in the history textbooks, or at least the ones that are still around. You become quite famous in your old age. <laughs> well, you look just like my friend Humphrey. Who are you? I'm Humphrey's great, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, grandson. My name is Carrots. Carrots? Well, that is a really silly name. Well, in the future, we name ourselves after famous vegetables that saved us during the Vegetable Canadian War of 2144. That was when Canada wanted to take over the world, but all the vegetables united and took a stand. Oh, well, this future sounds crazy. I don't think I like it. <laughs> Not as crazy as your times. I can't believe you guys lived in a time where you only had one internet. And how did you survive without holographic television? Oh, Kenny Joe, Kenny oh, Joe. Yeah, but Mr. Blueberry. Oh, I was lost and I was wandering oh. around and I ended up in this internet cafe where they had more than one internet. <gasps> oh Lord, I heard about that. It was amazing. But I, anyway, I was thinking uh, we should watch that segment we normally watch, how it worked. Oh. It might help me figure out how to figure out, fix this time machine. Well, I mean, we're in the future, but you're right. Well. Boys and girls, here's how it works in the future. <laughs> how it works in the future. The future holds many great things for mankind. Our cities evolve. Our cars can fly. Modern medicine is amazing. Cars in the future can go the speed of light. The Lucky Charms Leprechaun becomes the United States President. And he achieves a utopia full of scientific wonders and sights. But Canada becomes too powerful and they clone Stalin as their leader. The United States is destroyed. Soon China is destroyed as well. War breaks out all over Earth. Cities are destroyed and wrecked. So Chuck Norris leads a band of rebels together to fight back with Optimus Prime. And vegetables. They fight a good battle. Until the future cities are bombed away to smithereens. And chaos ensues. And the evil men take over the world. So many people take spaceships off the planet to Mars. How it works in the future. Carrots, what else can you tell us about the future so that our young viewers can learn? Well, I read that Earth at your time had six billion people. Now we're down to only a thousand. What? Yeah, the wars, diseases, pollution, and famine have destroyed the Earth. Well, how did the Earth become so bleak? Well, scientists and presidents have traced it back to these visitors from a land called Future. They told Amelia Earhart one day about it, and she made the movie Star Wars. Everything went ape crazy from there. Oh, no, Katie Joe, that was us. We've created an alternate time universe, one where Amelia Earhart directed the movie Star Wars. Well, I guess the world just wasn't ready for Luke Skywalker that early. Oh, this just sounds ridiculous. I know. They cast Charlie Chaplin as Han Solo. Well, I just don't think this makes any sense at all. Oh, no. It makes perfect quantum physics sense. See? Uh, let me show you. I have this board down here. If you could just... Uh, yeah? It's kind of... Oh, thank you. It was very heavy. If you look, you see our interaction in the 1920s has called an alternate timeline. And that is to say... If time is linear, like in Star Trek, and not Terminator. Oh, jeez, Louise, you're right. How could we have been so careless? One little interrupt. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, you should also be warned about the robots, too. Huh? What? Yeah, maybe back then in your primitive time, robots were servants that served you your lunch. But since then, robots have become aggressive 
and they eat people's brains. Oh, 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 oh here comes one now. Oh, I <laughs> am Meltron 3000. I eat brains. Well, Professor Blueberry, make the machine work. Oh, no, I can't. The plutonium reserves are low. Well, I need plutonium. Are the you telling this me thing. this sucker is nuclear? No, brains. this is sucker's electrical. I just need it for the chain reaction in the flux capacitor. Oh, brains, brains, brains. Well, I how eat do you get brains. plutonium? I have some plutonium. Uh, what? How do you have plutonium? It's 2154. You can buy plutonium at an everyday corner drugstore. Brains, I oh, eat brains. What do we do? Uh, don't worry, I have a PhD in Nujutsu. Hi! Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, I ah, eat. Bye! Ah, Take that! Ah. My hair, we must be sometime in the 80s. We're still 20 years off. Penelope, what are you doing here? Well, I'm here because I'm fabulous, Katie Jo! Well, what year is it? It's 1985 and the party is rocking! Radical awesome boss, woo! Come on, you can't just stand there, Katie Jo, 1985. You gotta dance, come on now, yeah! I mean, I can't dance. I feel so sad that I lost Professor Blueberry to the robot. Here I am, Katie Jo. I'm out the window! Oh, you made it! I can dance now! Yes, okay. indeed. I leaped into the vortex at the last second. That is the power of a true ninjutsu master. Oh, I'm so happy. So Penelope, tell me, what is awesome about the 80s? Well, the 1980s were a time of green materialism and laissez-faire economy. The Rubik's Cube was the only thing more popular than Michael Jackson and Miami Vice. Can you show me some of your dance moves? Oh, oh, okay. get it, girl. Oh, but okay. Katie Jo, okay. Katie Jo, mm -hmm. we're running out of time. The episode is almost over. What will we do? Oh, put the dancing on hold, we need to concentrate. Well, our musical guest is here. I mean, we can't just keep him waiting. I guess he can play a song while we try and fix the time machine's flux capacitor. Flux capacitor? I have one of those in my guitar case. <gasps> Great Scott! Can we use it? Sure, I mean, it doesn't really work as a metronome anyway. Oh, thanks! Everyone, here's our musical je guest, Justin Messina. Well, I'm guessing we're back in 2010, but how do I know it's the real 2010 and not an alternate 2010? Well, Kitty Joe, I have made sure we've landed at the exact millisecond that we started time traveling, so it's as if we've never left. Sounds good to me. Professor Blueberry, I am tired. I have had a lot of wardrobe changes. Mm, yeah. But your bow tie has always stayed the same. Well, it's because this tie never goes out of style. Ah. Well, you want to know something else that never goes out of style? Yeah. Our musical guest here is Justin Messina. They say friends should never date. It's a dangerous game when there's no coming back from what they don't know is the way that we always have been together. And when we coincide, the stars collide in the sky. And you know you're so hard to resist. I know it won't stop, I won't kiss, cause it's just something about you. I can't get enough of Don't make this any harder than it has to be Cause I can't stand the thought of losing you And I just don't deserve this punishment It's just a different point of view oh, oh. You say you don't want to make a big mistake when we're not ready for But I don't trust myself And I don't trust myself with you It's true But we can't keep doing this Pretending it's nothing when we kiss But I still give in cause I'm weak there is so much that I seek and I thought I could find it in you But I guess I was wrong 
Don't make this any harder than it has to be. Cause I can't stand the thought of losing you. And I just don't deserve this punishment. It's just a different point of view. Don't make this any harder. 